Welcome to the App Advisory Show, your fortnightly dose of all things cloud accounting, apps, and app advisory. Hey guys, welcome to the App Advisory Show. Uh, delighted to have Mr. Dan Cockerton. Hi, Dan. Hi, Matt. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. So today we're going to have a bit of a chat around the digital accounting. Um, Dan's got quite um, a different past, really, and has ended up sort of in event management, running some really cool digital uh, accountancy events uh, in this space. We'll have a chat about that, but a bit of a chat about your your history. Um, but Dan's been lucky to be on holiday recently. So how did the holes go, Dan? Yeah, lovely. Thanks, Matt. It was nice to uh, nice to get away from the madness. Nice to get some sun. Uh, nice to devote some time to the wife and kids, and uh, just not have the TV on though. You know, watching uh, some of the madness unfold or not unfold, and uh, it was just nice to get away, rest the brain, and uh, come back uh, firing uh, the next few weeks in the lead up to the show. So yeah, great. Thanks. Brilliant. And you you had a celebrity um, sat next to you. That you didn't know it was a celebrity, and you found out a little bit later. We just talked them before the before yeah. the show. Uh, tell us a bit about that. It's quite funny. Yeah, slightly embarrassing. So my wife and I got to Spain on the Friday. Um, and I'd seen this kind of fairly sizable guy walking around with his wife and kids and around the pool and stuff for a few days. <laughs> and uh, I noticed he was wearing rugby shorts. And on the third or fourth day, our sunbeds were right next to uh, this guy's and his wife's and his kids' sunbeds. So we just got chatting to them. And um, he actually went for a run. And when he came back, um, I asked him if he played a bit of rugby because he was wearing kind of rugby shorts and he had on a uh, sales sharp shorts. Yeah. And he said, yeah, yeah, I do, actually. I was like, oh, great, uh, for sale. And he said, yeah. Um, anyway, we got chatting about rugby and fairly kind of informal, just kind of messing around and stuff and kids in and out of the pool. And like, really nice guy, really nice family. Um, and towards the end of the day that we met them, um, his wife started saying kind of Manu this, Manu that. And <laughs> started dropping Manu in there. And I thought to myself, oh, she also mentioned something. Um, like he's, he's from Samoa, right? Manu yeah. Yeah, he's from Samoa. And she said that when they go back to Samoa, they um, you know they have a lovely time and what place it is. And the kind of it, 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 the kind of penny dropped, and I thought, please don't tell me that's Manu Tuilangi, and I've not recognised him. <laughs> anyway, as soon as they've left to go for an afternoon snooze, I got up on my phone and lo and behold, it was Manu Tuilangi. Um, lovely guy, lovely family. Um, we kind of gravitated towards each other across the week because we were the only English people in the in the hotel, the rest were German. So um, it was really nice, really, really nice people. And um, I know my wife stayed in touch uh, uh, with his wife on Instagram and stuff. So, um, yeah, if he, uh, if he happens to listen to the Apicus Community Podcast, <laughs> then, uh, top man, top man, man. Uh, nice to meet you. Yeah. Good man, great stuff. Maybe, maybe chuckle when you're telling me you didn't know who he was and you had to Google it to get it, but brilliant. Um, excellent. So, like, I've, we've known each other like a few years actually, Dan, in, in a couple of different guises, but why don't you tell us a little bit about your background with the accounting industry and, and, and how you got to where you got where you yeah, are. Yeah, so my, my, my kind of background is kind of cut in two, really. I've spent half of my career working in media and events, and I've spent half of my career working within the accountancy profession. Um, within the accountancy profession itself, I've had a couple of different roles. Um, I worked for a company called PFP for a number of years, where I account managed around 250 firms of accountants for them. And then my last employed role was working over at Zero. Mm -hmm. um, love the place, love the culture, as lots of people can attest to. Um, but in my time at Zero, I, I, I was very lucky that I was in the right place at the right time. Uh, cloud adoption uh, just kind of went to new levels. Making tax digital was coming down the line. The bank feeds were getting better. All of a sudden, light bulb moment came on for thousands of accountancy firms across the country, and I happened to be in the right place at the right time. But whilst I saw lots of accountants do digital transformation and moving on to the cloud really well. Um, you know, lots really struggled with it. You know, it's not yeah. done at the click of a switch and there's lots more around change management and getting buy-in that actually a lot of people, um, a lot of firms really struggled with. So I decided, as well as the kind of, uh, alongside that, the app ecosystem just kind of took off as well, as you know. Definitely. You, know, what you guys do. So it was a kind of mixture of those two things that made me think, right, I think I can do something bigger here. I think I can set up a media company or an events business to help educate accountants and all this stuff. So digital transformation, change management, the app ecosystem, the latest technology out there in the market. Um, and really we want to 
help accountants accelerate their digital transformation journeys. And we want to give them the tools, the connections and the information um, and the people to you know, really thrive in, in what's you know, going to be like a new world with kind of technology and cloud right at the heart of it. So that's kind of like my, my journey, really. I've worked with accountancy firms for 12 years now. Um, yeah. Lots of those guys I call friends and have known that to that time. So I know the space really well. I understand the industry. I, I know where it's going. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what led me to today. Uh, so our first product, if you like, was the Digital Accountancy Show. Um, we were due to run that in March last year. Uh, we had just under 3,000 accounts that signed up to the show in our first year, which I thought was amazing. Um, we had 50 to 60 exhibitors lined up as well, including yourselves. Um, and yeah, like we're, we're, we're kind of all guns blazing. We've rearranged it now for the 1st of September, so it's coming up in four weeks. Um, and yeah, we're kind of, kind of, yeah, all hands on deck getting ready for that. So pretty interesting because I, I think when like you say you're at zero at a really good time uh you know lots of lots of areas really progressing at that point for for yeah. lots of lots of reasons lots of different ways um so was this just an itch that had to be scratched like when you were in this world of like i'm sure you could have uh carried on at zero or, or done something similar in that sort of world of that then was was this just an itch that got to be scratched that i think there's an opportunity here and i could do something and you wanted to go and take that leap well, unfortunately like the first one coinciding with like the biggest pandemic we've seen in our lifetime but um within that what was the what was the the, 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 yeah. the mentality behind that yeah the mentality so i've been very fortunate in my career that i've worked for you know serial entrepreneurs and my first job out of uni was working for a media company that did events and publications and online content within the dental and healthcare sector um, and I got on really well with the owner of the business there. Um, not a massive company, maybe 50, 60 employees. Yeah, um, yeah. And that was my first job out of uni. And I had seen the success that this guy had had. Um, and ever since then, it made me think, I want to do that one day. I want to do that one day. You know, you, 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 I'm a big believer in you can do anything you want in this world. Um, and yeah, it's something that, yeah, exactly that. It was an itch that I've had probably for the last 10, 15 years. Um, and I just felt like, this was the right opportunity, not just from a kind of commercial business perspective, but actually to have some sort of impact as well, which is which is important to me. Yeah. So although the last 18 months have been fairly painful for us, I mean, we have kind of diversified into digital content and we will continue that growth in that area. Um, and maybe the pandemics happened, you know, helped us from that respect and opened up new new streams of income and yeah. stuff. Um, but hopefully it'll all be worth it, you know. Um, we're really excited. The show that we're planning in, in kind of four or five weeks' time is is looking looking great, and uh, uh, registrations are going up. And we were down at the venue last week, and it looks amazing. And yeah, everything is is looking great. Brilliant. So, how's it been from providing a product like Zero to the accounting and bookkeeping profession to now providing? Uh, a show, an event, an education, all of those things, really. Like, how, how has that shift been? Because I, I imagine it's the same sort of um, audience, but there's a different way of working. So how has that shift been for you? Yeah, um, I would definitely say, so I think from my perspective, because I've worked in the space for a, a fairly long time now, I know accountants pretty well. Um, and what I mean by that is I... I I'm generalizing a lot here. I know there's exceptions, but I, I know, I, I think I know the personality type pretty well of, of a, a traditional accountant. And from a, although we're not kind of, kind of asking accountants for any money because we're kind of doing, doing events and stuff that are free to attend, um, we still have to market to them the same yeah. way. You know, you have to understand what makes them tick and, you know, you, you, you can't send certain things that say, you know, you're going to, grow your income by 5,000% and all that sort of stuff. You know, they just, they, they see right through that. Um, they've, their accountants are, you know, very detail orientated, very proof of concept orientated. Um, uh, by nature, I would say fairly reserved characters and your marketing and your messaging has to reflect that to, to some point. Um, I would definitely say from the transition from going from employment to working for yourself, there's definitely a lot more pressure, definitely more, a lot more anxiety at home. 
uh, definitely uh, a few more grey hairs, that's for sure, or losing it in my case. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so I mean, the transition has been great, actually, you know, because I've been in the space for a long time, you know, when I worked at Zero, I was going to all the events or the networking events. Um, I know the app providers, people like yourself and all the other guys, obviously I know Zero really well. So from a kind of launching a business point of view, I, I had the relationship so I could, getting through the door was a relatively easy thing for me. Um, but on the whole, you know, we know the space well. Um, I think kind of marketing to accountants is what we're good at. Um, you know, they are very kind of metrics driven as well. So we tend to try and um, when we're kind of doing an email shot or some marketing to accountants, we tend to use stats and give them some proof that this isn't bullshit. Um, to be French, probably have to beat that out. Um, but you know, you, you have to kind of, um, you have to, you know, you have to show these guys that actually, you know, this, this is real and this works and, um, you know, there's a, there's a huge amount of benefit in it for you. But in terms of the transition from employed to, from employed to running my own business, yeah, probably a lot harder than actually going from selling accounts as a product to selling, selling them events. Events. Yeah. Um, and I suppose as well, like when you're working for a product like Xero, you'll be aware of like the challenges of, of change and transformation and digital adoption and all those things. But I suppose you get a better insight to those now you're not selling a product and seeing all of those problems holistically, right? Because yeah. obviously when you're selling a product, it's very much geared towards getting the product out and getting it into the hands of the right people so they can then go and work with it and utilize it. Yeah. And I always, I always feel like when people come out of that, just selling the, the, the sole product, you get more of a feel for all of the areas that are moving for, for, for any, any sector in any like sort of change period. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, you know, whenever I've worked for an employer in the past, I've always gone, you know, full committed. I am zero through and through, which I am yeah, um, yeah. zero through and through. And, you know, and, you know, you go and see accountants and you try and talk to them about what their kind of vision is and where they want to go as a practice and, um, you know, how they can kind of roll out zero to all of their clients. And you think, come on, this is, this is kind of a no brainer. Let's do it. Um, but then when you kind of take a step back and especially like, as I mentioned already, when you're running your own business, you realize that these people are incredibly busy people. Yeah. You know, they are constantly meeting deadlines. They're managing clients. They're managing staff. You know, the accountants are so, so busy. And that's the one thing that I've really taken away. Sometimes it's not always easy just to go click of a switch. Let's, in, let's, let's bring in this piece of technology. Um, so it's definitely much more of a eye opener. Taking this kind of, like you said, holistical viewpoint now is a um, yeah, it's a it's a nicer position to be in, and I certainly understand. And I think accountants maybe are a bit more open with me now as well around kind of what their challenges are okay, and interesting. practice and getting people on. And um, so um, yeah, it's de it's definitely not as easy as it sounds for sure. It's definitely digital transformation isn't something that's done overnight. It's a continuous process and it will continue forever because there'll be technology, whether it's robotics or data analytics, there'll always be something coming coming down the line. So um, yeah, it's a really, it's actually a really kind of privileged position to be in actually. I, I love what I'm doing right now. I love speaking to accountants who are getting value from the content we're putting out or getting value from um, a webinar that we've done or, or a software a software company that we've introduced them to. So yeah, really fortunate and real, feel really privileged to be in the position that we're in. Great. Um, so we, we touched a little bit on digital transformation and, and digital products and, and things like that. Now, I suppose the flip side for you is um, you're aware um, and whether you're marketing or whether people are contacting you, you're, you're speaking to some of these new digital apps and digital solutions and digital ways of working. Um, so you'll get, you're starting to probably get an early sight of things that maybe you didn't see when you're in a, employed by a product. Uh, it comes a bit further down the line. Any specific sort of trends you're starting to pick up on or, or see or anything that yeah. sort of caught, caught your radar? Yeah, a couple of things. So it will come as no surprise from a kind of advisory piece, dashboard, reporting software. We're seeing more and more companies come into that space and forecasting and that sort of stuff. Yeah. I had a couple of calls this week, actually, with uh, two reporting add-ons that look really, really good. Um, so that kind of comes as no surprise. I'd say the other area where we're seeing an explosion in new apps and new technology is in kind of open banking. Um, mm. just open banking is changing the game and saving so much time and giving us access to data that people didn't have before, whether it's better bank feeds, 
Um, I've had calls recently with the guys at Cresco, which is payments, yeah. um, Armalytics, which is bringing in bank statement data. So where accountants are traditionally chasing their clients with bank statement data and the bank balances, actually Armalytics will just kind of deal with that for you. And it's kind of, you know, it's real kind of real data. Um, I walk and pay, obviously, they're open banking and saving time there from the um, data side of things. And then you've got all the new challenger banks coming through. These kind of challenger banks that are targeting the kind of micro business end of the market, whether it be landlords or micro businesses or, or, or kind of one man limited companies where you can do the invoicing, do the bookkeeping. And I'm sure one or two of them now are doing the kind of MTD returns or plan returns as well. And that's gonna, that's really interesting. And we're, we're, we're getting lots of contact from, from those guys. And then the other one, which I might touch on a bit more later is this kind of this piece around e invoicing. So traditionally, so people who are on the call or listening to the podcast, you know, if you're using Zero, you might know that you've got a zero to zero key in there where you can send invoices straight into your customer's purchase ledger. What you're going to start to see over the next kind of few years is kind of cross-platform e-invoicing. So if I raise my invoice in Zero, it will pop up in your free agent or cash flow. Um, uh, you know, whatever, yeah. Uh, and that's the future. And that starts to get really interesting when you start to see some of these companies that, that are coming through. I think electronic invoicing, it's been it's been in the enterprise for a long time. So if you're a business that works with Marks and Spencers or anything like that, you, you've got to commit to what's called EDI, Electronic Data Interchange, a really old interface, and it's been around forever. And and I can't remember the product. I was just thinking about it, but obviously Zero made an acquisition around e-invoicing in the last nine months as well. Which one, sorry, Dan? Tickstar. Yeah, Tickstar. Yeah. So that's definitely an interesting play where we're going to see this multi-platform uh, moving uh, of data, but it's certainly been an enterprise for a long, long time. And this is just what we see a lot of, right? It's really expensive to do that when an only enterprise can afford it. And now it comes down the chain and becomes really uh, an option for everybody. So yeah, yeah really good insight and, uh, and trying to pick up on. Cloud adoption has helped with that, right? So the kind of SME market for cloud adoption has only really kind of last, I probably said last five or six years, it's really started to get serious traction. And you just look, you have to look at, kind of zero and zero's kind of annual reports in the UK and you can see the adoption it's been getting. So now it's possible to, to deliver that as a service on scale to these kind of thousands of SMEs. So yeah, it's a really exciting space. And um, yeah, I get quite excited when I see kind of companies doing that stuff because I think that's, um, yeah, it's going to be, uh, play a fairly fundamental role in the, in, the, in the space in the future, that's for sure. Yeah, the other thing I'll just pick up on is, is that MTD element you spoke about. I think it's a real land grab for all of these um challenger banks i think we're going to see a, like a quite a different set of um solutions come up for the itza for mtd here in the uk yeah. and, and i was talking to quite a few firms about well, you know we've not spoken to our clients about what our mtd platform is and i think what we've got to realize is, as accounting and bookkeeping firms and, and this is what we're going to be working with in terms of these itza clients is that they're already being marketed to these itza potential clients for MTD. They've already got the fintech banks onto them. The Chamber of Commerce is talking about what, whatever that partnership, a free agent, a, a Sage, a Zero, a QBO, a, a whatever it might be, a cash flow, like you say. Um, you've got your networking groups who've all got specialists who's pumping something. So I think the issue is for the firm, if, if they don't start telling people what their preferred supplier or suppliers are they want their clients to use, they're going to end up with a mishmash of fintech banks and cloud accounting setups and whatever new software we haven't even seen yet for MTD for it. Yeah. And all of a sudden you've got this mishmash of all these clients for MTD and you've got to learn umpteen different platforms. So I think it's really important that firms start telling clients what they want to use for MTD for it, so even if it's, you know, a while before they start actually engaging with it. But I, I'm the same as you, I've seen that, certainly with the Challenger Bank, I can see it as a massive, when you've got like Starling doing their £8 a month invoice, yeah. fat returns, you know, the whole lot. Um, it, it's quite a, uh, it's going to be quite a saturated market, I think. Yeah, yeah there's, there's loads coming through. You've got one called Anna Money. You've got Counting Up and those guys. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure there's kind of one or two others that I've spoken to recently that I can't quite recall. But um, yeah, and it's, it's, it's an exciting space. I think you're absolutely right with that respect that accountancy firms need to take the lead on it, um, need to take that position of kind of, we've had a look at these systems and this is what we're recommending to everyone. Because otherwise we go back to the problem that we had kind of five or six years ago where we were being dictated to by clients around what software or what spreadsheets or whatever yeah. they're using. 
every single person in the practice is doing things differently with different clients and it just becomes a bit of a mess and it's really kind of inefficient and there's a risk that that happens again with ITSA coming through actually Absolutely. now we need to um get some form of kind of universal strategy for, for for those clients for sure yeah okay interesting um so obviously you're in the event space now you, you had a model which you know when you started this business or and got involved that you were thinking this has been what it's going to be yeah. pandemic hits yeah. you've pivoted adapted all those keywords that were used through the pandemic did some on online more digital marketing like what are you thinking like for the future of events like what's your what are you basing your mindset on for yeah the- so i think so for us as a um, as an event business we had always planned to live stream our content on the day to our social media channels so i think every event needs to do that as a minimum now you know people are expecting it. if you're running an event right how do i get access to it online is it through your social media platforms is it through a an event online event platform um that you'll be doing so for sure we definitely will be continued for this year i think it's we're, we're probably too late in the day now to do anything bigger we'll certainly be live streaming all of our kind of content um through our social media channels so people that can't make the event can, can kind of plug in there i think we have to create different experiences within the event so one of the things that we're also looking at is um you know do we have someone with a 360 camera on the day um, with uh, headphones that are microphones. So people who are plugging in online can put their headphones on it, feel like they're at the event, they can look yeah, around right. and hear what's going on in the space. We're looking at that. Um, and then I think that, that's kind of short term. I think medium term, what's going to happen? I think generally events companies are going to align themselves much more to technology. You know, the technology has been there. Certainly like there's been an explosion of event technology kind of happening in the last 12 months, as you can imagine with everything that's happened. Yeah. Um, but I definitely think there's going to be more of an alignment. I think events companies are going to be exploring technology um, and investing more time and money into it to give a better experience to the audience and to the people that can't make the event. I think in the short to medium term as well, I think you'll see event companies launch a digital version of their event at the same time as running their face-to-face event. So if I'm someone based in in Europe somewhere and I want to get to the digital accountancy show um, but can't actually get there on the day for whatever reason, I can log into digital accountancy shows website and I can do a lot of the stuff that I can do in a in a face to face capacity. Okay. So that might be speaking to exhibitors, it might be networking. I mean, you're not going to be able to enjoy the after show biz, but you know, there's a lot there that those kind of platforms can do now. You know, and I think a lot of events companies will begin to build communities on these platforms as well. From some of the stuff that I'm seeing, you know, if you've got five thousand people at an event and you've got a few thousand plugged into the online platform, well, you can kind of keep those guys in there, provide value, and I think we're going to see the the rise of kind of online communities as well. Um, and then long term, I don't know. I'm 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 doing a lot of research around. I follow a couple of ex Goldman Sachs hedge fund guys, and and they were kind of macro investors, so their job was. Where, what, 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 what direction is the world going in? And let's hedge up, let's, let's kind of put some bets on around that this area is growing or this area is growing or emerging markets is coming through. And I follow a couple of guys who have gone quite big into kind of blockchain and cryptocurrencies and they're talking a lot about that. And what's coming out from these guys is the world is moving into this kind of augmented reality, yeah. virtual reality space. And they keep going on about it. So I decided to buy an Oculus Rift Facebook VR headset because I wanted to understand the experience. Like, is this kind of, do you put this thing on and it's mind blowing or is it actually a fad that's going to pass? And I put this headset on that and straight away off the bat, you can see this is the future. Um, Even when I had to link up the Wi-Fi to the headset, you're just in this room that is incredible. Uh, and then you go into another room where you choose which app or what experience you want to do. And yeah. you're looking out a window and you can see this kind of monorail past you. And it's just insane. I don't think, I don't know what the adoption is going to be like with our generation. But if you think about the kids that are kind of 15, 16 now, in 10 years time, they're going to be 26 approaching 30. These guys, these kids, this generation are already in metaverse. They're playing games 24 seven. They've got the VR headsets. So I think you're going to see longer term this um, collaboration between technology, augmented reality, virtual reality and events. And I think the experiences are only going to get better and better and better. And I think from an event perspective, 
what we are trying to do, bearing in mind we're only in our first year, and you know, our ambitions with this event are pretty big. Um, but I can't remember where I was going with that now. I completely forgot where I was going with that. Well, I'll just pick up on one thing with, with the VR. I think you're dead right. I went on VR like five years ago. Um, and it was it was good. Like I, it made me feel sick on a roller coaster. Yeah. Um, and I went on one last year and I was like amazed at the difference in, in five years. So I was going to bring it up like GCVR as being something because when we go to these things, yes, we go for the education. Yes, we go for the collaboration, but we're all sort of after experiences now. And I think that what that's what's going to bring it right. Is that yeah. is that 4D experience that am I there? Like get as close as I can without physically getting there. Because it's not always about wanting to. It's just actually, can you actually get there? Yeah, so I absolutely. think that's a huge thing. Yeah, sorry, that's where I was going with that point, actually, is we have to make sure that when we're running events that we give people an incredible experience. Yeah. And you get that with, with, with events like ZeroCon. You know, my business partner and I travel out to Portugal once a year to Web Summit to go and see how those guys do things. They get 70,000 people yeah. um, in startups. And it's an, it's an incredible week. But the whole experience from start to finish is mind blowing. You know, no rock is left unturned. It's um, and we want to do the same thing. Like, you know, we're in year one in years three, four, five. We really want to deliver. I mean, our, our aim with this is to make this the biggest technology conference on the planet for accountants. Like, that's our aim with it. So we want to get up to 40, 50,000 people. Um, and we have to provide a really amazing experience. Great speakers, great content, great networking opportunities. And then the social part of it as well. We have to make sure we invest in that and make sure we give people um, a night or, or, or several nights to remember. So, yeah, that's where I think events are going. I think exhibitions where they are kind of shell scheme based, a bit kind of marketplace type, hustle and bustle. I don't know. I think you have to give people a really great experience if you're going to ask for a day or two days out of their, out of their busy week. I think I'd add to that as well, Dan. I think we've turned, because we've not been going anywhere for a period of time, like personally, I feel really picky and selective about where I'm going to go. Yeah. Whereas I think there was a feeling and a compulsion. I've got to be there because I've always gone to it. Yeah. I think now you'll find people are going, well, one, do I want to travel? Uh, two, I'm still not sure about it. So I've got to make sure that what I'm going for is actually what I need. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's going to be interesting going going forward that I think you are going to have to either put an experience on or some really good content or really good education uh, or just be a really good community. And if you've got an element of all four, which are reasonably good, you're probably going to grab people. But I don't think you just go on one that it's, you know, there's going to be 400 exhibitors here and, and go and walk through and, and fill your boots. I just can't see that being that appealing anymore. Yeah, I totally agree. Totally agree. Um, and our plan is certainly to disrupt that space. Like, and, and I think we will. Like we go to we go to other events outside of our industry. There's only yeah. so much you can learn from when you're kind of focusing on your own industry. So we go to technology events, gaming events. I mean, just look at, pick up the small things, whether it's production or content or how they set the stage up. Um, and we're constantly borrowing ideas from from these guys. So, um, yeah, I think I, I think every business has to do that. You know, don't just look at them in your own market what everybody else is doing. Actually, look what technology companies are doing. Look yeah. what you know, um, uh, kind of a, 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 a sports and, and motor companies are doing. You know, like Tesla. Like Tesla have changed the game from an experience point of view, right? And that's mm. why they're doing so well. And the EV market is taking off because of all the rules that are coming in. But uh, certainly encourage people to kind of look outside of their own profession to, to borrow ideas. Okay. Well, that was a pretty, pretty good debate about bringing technology into how we deliver new things. And, uh, you know, an event's going to be an event, but how it's delivered and the experience of it could be entirely different is yeah. I mean, summing up from that. Um, so last question, which we ask everybody. Uh, Favourite piece of tech? It can be personal or business or both, just to get an idea of what's floating in your boat and uh you've already given it you've given quite a few bits of tech that are sort of in and around but but what's sort of in 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 your world for, for tech at the moment yeah so um I mean, we touched on the ar and vr stuff right so that's that's coming i think you're going to see um wearable glasses from an augmented reality perspective kind of uh, uh really get some adoption over the next five years but some of the stuff that i'm kind of looking at the moment so in terms of personal so me and my wife are getting kind of really into alexa so right, okay. Alexa, Alexa is, you know, you ask it to play you some 90s dance music and it plays you rhythms of dancer and happy days, but actually it does so much more than that now. 
Like I went into, um, I was just working late last night when I went back into the home, my wife kind of jumped out and went, you're going to love this. Um, and basically what she does now is when she asks Alexa to put some butter or the cornflakes on her shopping list, it actually adds it to her Tesco's uh, delivery. No way. Yeah. So it does that now for her. So by the time we come to our shop at the end, or when we come to the point of ordering our shopping, 75% of it is already in the car. So we only have to add in the last few bits. So as you add, and but there's loads of little things like that you can do with it now. So I'm starting to use it for my calendar. Um, and that's quite, quite cool. So tell me what I've got on today or add this into my diary. It does it all for me, which is great. And that's only getting more and more advanced. So that's quite cool. So that just popped into my brain last night because- um, just, just on that as well, my nephew, um, he's 18 now, but he used to have a stint uh, with my sister-in-laws. He would actually just chuck random things onto the shopping list. I really, so, yeah, yeah. Now that's going into Tesco. I'm going to let him know, actually, you'll have even more. Yeah, fun. yeah, you could find all sorts in there, couldn't you? So uh, that's really, really interesting. So, yeah, that was quite cool. And, and um, I even made a note of the app here that she's using to kind of link Alexa up to everything. It's called IFTTT. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought that was right. interesting because you asked me about personal. I thought that was quite cool. So, yeah, in terms of like um, other stuff, like you know this already, but I'm, I'm kind of doing lots of research into kind of blockchain the kind of rise of cryptocurrency over the last kind of six, well, over the last kind of 10 years, really. But we're really exploring this space. It really, you know, some of the block, the benefits of blockchain, when you understand the technology, when you understand that all these transactions are recorded on a public blockchain, you can see where it's all, where it's all going. Like the Bank of England announced last week that um, they're launching their own uh, central bank digital currency. You know, you've got Bitcoin going through, you've got the likes of PayPal now accepting uh, cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Ethereum, you've got Tesla, you've got Visa, MasterCard, uh, BlackRock, the world's largest asset management company are advising their clients to invest in this stuff. Yeah. Um, and there was a rumor, I'm not sure if it was confirmed or not, but there was a rumor this week or last week that Amazon were going to start accepting cryptocurrencies as well. And, you know, I have a passion for this. You know, I've got a little bit of money in it. Um, but actually, when you begin to understand what things like XRP do and the benefits of this technology, it starts to get really, really interesting. Um, and I love it. I, I absolutely love it. And there's things called, um, have you had a look at like NFTs or anything like that? Do you, do you know anything about that? No, I haven't to be fair. Yeah, NFTs are like basically a digital asset that you claim ownership or your ownership is staked on the blockchain. So for example, there is a company called Ecomi and they sell digital collectibles of your Batmans, your Supermans, your Spidermans and whatever. And you basically buy this digital collectible and your ownership is recorded on the public blockchain. So anyone can, can see it and that's how that ownership is measured. But what's now happening is this kind of boom around NFTs, which is digital assets that you own. There was an artist a few months back who sold a piece of art for 50 million, a digital piece of art for $50 million. Um, but what you can do with NFTs is, for example, I'm just going to kind of throw this out there, but imagine kind of Apicus community launching their own NFT, say it's 200 quid, and I buy that, and for 200 quid, I get benefits of X, Y, Z. It might be access to all your content, it might be access to your training, and, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. yeah. But I then own that NFT. And if I come to retirement or I go move into a different space and I want to sell that NFT that gives me these benefits, I can then sell that NFT to someone else. And when I sell that NFT to someone else, you as the content owner get a royalty from that. Wow. So imagine, imagine the opportunities for people like who write books. So mm. I buy Della Hudson's book for 10, 15 pounds, whatever it's worth. I then read it a couple of times and then I decide to sell it on, on the open market. I then sell that book digitally. Della Hudson gets a slice of the commission on the resale value and it's resold again. So the opportunity is endless in publishing, in music, in events potentially as well. But what you're also going to see is the rise of tokens as well. So what you're going to start to see is people commercializing their communities for the use of tokens. And people are already doing this. Barcelona, Real Madrid, I think Manchester United have launched one now. You're seeing these kind of institutions with big communities and big customer bases launching their own tokens and cryptocurrencies and what that then means is their fans or their community can then claim a stake of ownership on the blockchain and say i believe this community and this network is going to grow 
and yeah. this is my this is my ownership of that and then hopefully the the, the 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 price increases imagine like i'm not i'm not kind of saying zero or any of the bigger software companies are going to do this but imagine if zero launched their own cryptocurrency or their own token and you could claim ownership of that token be part of the community invest in the community and actually it turns you into a bit of an ambassador for the product as well yeah so you know we're looking into that as well you know can we launch the digital accountancy show nft or token only only discussion stages at the moment no near kind of move forward. yeah but can we get can we deliver some benefits by delivering an nft or a token and then people will inadvertently become ambassadors for us and hopefully promote us to their friends and colleagues and I don't know, just something we'll play around with. But yeah, certainly the, the, the technology that's floating in my boat outside of the accountancy technology space, yeah. um, probably gathered is kind of blockchain, cryptocurrencies and, and that sort of stuff. Yeah, because I, I had heard about digital art. I didn't know it was called NFTs. I'd heard about the digital art and, and owning assets yeah. under this type of guys. I just didn't know the, the term was NFT. So that's yeah. pretty interesting. Okay, so... Yeah sort of come to the end, we've, we've spoken a lot about starting out and now we're thinking forward. Um, just to remind everyone about the the show, do you want to give us a, a bit of a heads up on, yeah. on what yeah. it is and what's happening? So 1st of September at the brand new Tottenham Hotspur Football Stadium, the first event in the accountancy space for two years, um, the Digital Accountancy Show. It's a technology conference aimed for accountants in practice we have we currently have 1200 accountants signed up we're aiming for 2000 by the end of august um, it's going to be an incredible events some cr incredible experiences um, the production is looking great um, and i would love to see as many people there as possible um, i think now is the right time to, to begin to bring people back together again very privileged the fact that we get to the opportunity to do it first um, but it's going to be a, a really great event we've got We've got just over 60 exhibitors there, including yourselves. You yeah. guys are running the uh, app advisory stage for us. So that's going to be really yeah. great. We're looking at things like digital transformation, change management. Um, we're look, also looking at the app and the app ecosystem. We're looking at robotics, um, the importance of data analytics and how we can help clients understand their data better to make better decisions and how accountants can surface up that information. Um, and we've got some groundbreaking new technology there as well. Um, uh, I don't know if I mentioned... Um, we were talking earlier about e-invoicing. There's a company called Bimbix, B-M-B-I-X. Yeah, I know. Kind of, one of the, kind of one of the kind of companies offering this kind of e-invoicing solution. You know, lots of lots of really great, great technology there. Um, and um, yeah, and you guys are going to be there as well, Matt. So, you know, why not kind of give yourselves a plug and, uh, and let everybody know what you guys are doing? Yeah, so we're going to be talking about um, app advisory education, uh, bringing the app ecosystem into some services that you can take to your client base and actually attract some clients as well. Um, so we're going to be doing an element of um, theory, a bit of practice, because we're going to have some of the some of the firms we've worked with, they're going to be talking a little bit about their experience, about building services, building um, app stacks uh, and those types of, of areas. So it's going to be, uh, be pretty cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to it and just looking forward to engaging with some people and uh, actually saying hello to a few people. So it's going to be a good day. That's the most important thing that I think, um, like I've been out a couple of times recently and just seeing people in the flesh, having a chat, having a beer is just the most amazing feeling. And um, we've got we've got some other stuff going on at the show as well. We've got the kind of stadium tours happening during the day as well because the venue is out of this world. It's insanely Brilliant. different. And, you know, they have uh, contracts with the NFL to run NFL games there and, and the technology infrastructure of the building is is out of this world so we're going to be doing that and then we've got the digital accountancy night show in the evening as well so one of the things that the Spurs Stadium has is um, the Beaver Town microbrewery on site so they are uh, brewing all their own alcohol and beer um, so we're going to be heading down there after the show for some beers um, and for a, a bit of entertainment as well so um, yeah sign up on the website which is digitalaccountancyshow.co.uk We'll put that in the in the show notes, Dan, so people can hook in and get straight on there. But it sounds Man. sounds really good. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, mate. Well, well, we'll leave it at that point. Thanks a lot for your time today, Dan. Uh, and got quite a lot of info, quite a lot of insights. It's been been really good. So much appreciated. Thanks, mate. I hope that was hope that was helpful. And uh, yeah, look forward to seeing everybody at the show in uh, four or five weeks on the first of September. No worries. Um, yeah. So anyone who's listening. Make sure you subscribe uh, on the Spotify, the Apple, iTunes, all of the, the main 
uh, podcast platforms and it's also on YouTube. You can get it on there um, and we'll leave it at that today. So cheers all and I'll catch you all soon. Awesome. Cheers, Matt.